Hey guys, I am really excited about today's video. We're gonna be doing a deep dive into Palantir. Palantir is my highest conviction stock that I'm invested in personally at the moment. And a little bit about the company, it is a data analytics company as well as uh, software cloud computing. And a little bit about the founder, Peter Thiel. Very interesting, very intelligent guy uh, from a philosophical standpoint, but um, some a little bit about his background. He is an American billionaire slash venture capitalist. He was the co-founder of PayPal with Elon Musk. And he was one of the first people um, on the outside of the Facebook corporation to invest in it very early on. So that's a little bit about Peter Thiel, super interesting guy, highly recommend uh, researching his ideas and following his, um, um, his investor footprint, <laughs> very smart guy. But let's take a little bit of a dive into Palantir's financial. So Palantir IPO'd back in 2020 at around $10 a share, and now we're trading on the day, just over $28 at $28.70. Guys, we've seen over 49% year-over-year revenue increases. We've seen earnings per share up almost 59%. We've seen a 16% increase in net profit margin, guys. Now, let's talk a little bit about the negative operating incomes that we see. And guys, the reason for this number being in the negatives is because with the commercialization of Palantir, there's following a lot of um, costs and expenses to launch their products commercially. So up until very recently, the government was the only, <laughs> the government and the military were the only customers of Palantir. So when you research them, they have over a decade worth of contracts with the military. Their geospatial intelligence literally first-handedly assisted in finding Osama bin Laden like in a remote cave somewhere. So the capabilities of this um, company are so in depth in terms of data analytics and software cloud computing. And let's take a look at their earnings <laughs> for the past four quarters, guys. We had we we have amazing revenue. We have amazing earnings per share. They are consistently outperforming expectations. They're constantly exceeding expectations of analysts and investors. So guys, we're going to take a dive into the software and the operating systems that Palantir has to offer. And some of the industries and sectors that Palantir is going to be infiltrating. So to put this in perspective, my part of my investment thesis, as you know, if you've watched the video, is really taking into account where, what direction are we headed? Where are we going in the future? You know, what companies, what services, what technology is going to propel all of society forward? Data analytics, there is not a single industry, there is not a single sector, there is not a single pillar of society that cannot benefit immensely from advanced data analytics. And what's so unique about Palantir's data analytics is they are heavily propelled by predictive artificial intelligence. Now, what is the significance of predictive artificial intelligence in terms of commercialization, in terms of security in terms of counterterrorism, in terms of geospatial intelligence, in terms of space exploration. Why is that so important? Why is data the driving resource, the most valuable resource that exists right now after time, of course? Because the more data you have, the more accurate data you have, the more seamless data that you have, the more efficient 
your operations are going to be, the, the more money that your company's ultimately going to save, the less manpower you're going to need, the, the lower operating costs, supply chain fixes, logistics, data analytics. To put this in, to put this into perspective, Amazon is the largest data analytics slash cloud computing company after Google, right? After Alphabet. Amazon Web Services is the reason that Amazon generates as much revenue as it does. Everybody thinks that, oh, you know, Amazon is a trillion dollar company because of its, its dominance in the e-commerce sector. It, while that is a factor, Amazon's primary source of income comes from web services. And what are those web services comprised of? Advertisements. And what are those advertisements fueled by? How do they create those advertisements? How do they specialize those advertisements for every single user to see a different ad when they're searching Google? How do they do that? Data analytics. So that's just a little perspective about why data is the most valuable resource there is because once you have an, an influx of data, having access to having access to everything that is going to optimize your business performances, it's going to help you make better decisions. And that's where that predictive artificial intelligence comes in on Palantir side. So we're going to go into some of their software and some of the operating systems that they have to offer. And to put it in a perspective so you guys can have a better understanding of exactly, you know, what is this company's capabilities? What, you know, what are, what are their use cases? You know, how do they make money? Let's dive right into that, you guys. So one of their commercialized operating systems we have is Gotham. Um, a little bit about Gotham. <laughs> I'm sorry, I laugh because it's like, I love this company, but it is some of the scariest technology that like you didn't even know existed. Um, Palantir Gotham is an AI operating system that basically you can see here, it accelerates decisions for the operators across roles and all domains. So like we talked about before Palantir went public, their only customers were essentially the government, the military, the FBI, and the CIA. And this is because Gotham has surfaced certain insights that allow really, really complex data analytics for global defense, so i.e. the military. And this has propelled our intelligence forward vastly. It was This company was founded in 2003 just after 9-11 happened. So Gotham, upon creation of this company, was the AI for counterterrorism. And we're going to watch a quick video so you guys can have a little bit more insight on this operating system directly from the inside. So let's dive in here, guys. I'm Meredith, and I'm a deployment strategist at Palantir. During my time as an active duty Air Force officer, I saw firsthand how hard it is to navigate the fog of war. Over the past 20 years, we've been focused on the counterinsurgency fight. And all that time, our near peer rivals have observed our actions, learned our capabilities, and grown bolder. The South China Sea is heating. Vladimir Putin tells the U.S. A North Korean nuclear attack could be Tensions imminent. between the U.S. and Iran are near Taiwan as tensions escalate. Now that the focus is shifting to great power competition, the real question is, can we deter the next great war? As a notional example, an escalation could start with something as simple as the Chinese military conducting a routine exercise in the South China Sea. 
To see the full picture and make tactical, operational, and strategic decisions, the U.S. and allied forces rely on Palantir. Monitoring the exercise, AI models running on satellite data detect an increased level of military activity. To the north, ship detection models identify an alarming buildup of fishing vessels surrounding a major Taiwanese port. An activity model detects that many of those ships are tied together, suggesting an ulterior motive and increasing the risk of a blockade. The U.S. maintains a national interest in free trade throughout the South China Sea. And as an island only 90 miles off the coast of mainland China, Taiwan is especially reliant on freedom of navigation through international waters. This free trade is particularly critical given that Taiwan produces 80% of the world's semiconductors. The device you're watching this on today almost certainly relies on these parts. Any disruption could be disastrous. So as the team watches closely with partner nations, a new alert comes in from Japanese intelligence. The Chinese Luyang destroyer has gone dark and isn't showing up on intelligence feeds. The ship had previously been docked in a Southern Naval base, but AI models detect that it's now missing. Gotham fuses data from multiple sources to project likely paths for the Luyang. The most dangerous routes head east, towards both the military exercise and the mounting tensions outside the Taiwanese port. The analyst identifies a key fork to monitor between the routes. To collect more imagery, machine learning models built by academic and commercial partners run on data across all domains. The models determine that satellite coverage alone is not enough to find the ship. Based on what is capable and ready, the system recommends a few alternatives. The best option is an aircraft from Okinawa. Before finalizing the selection, analysts deploy the latest micro models, trained to avoid incoming threats, identify military equipment, and detect military ships. The unmanned aircraft receives its mission and prepares for takeoff. Time is ticking, and they need to find the ship quickly. As the aircraft departs, video streams back to headquarters in real time. A ship identification model detects the dimensions, speed, and weapon system of the destroyer headed north. An analyst back in the operations center verifies the detection, which confirms the Luyang is on the most dangerous path and is only a few hours away from the potential blockade. The commander is briefed on the fast developing situation and examines several human and machine generated courses of action that have been jointly tested and developed in past exercises and simulations. The first option involves sending reinforcements to a nearby base, which may take too long. The second option is to send a manned aircraft over the fishing vessels, which could introduce unnecessary risk. The third option is a freedom of navigation operation, which means positioning an American or allied ship closer to the developing situation. This option appears to have the highest probability of success with the lowest risk. Joint forces decide to task an American ship. Once the choice is selected, a task order is submitted and the American ship quickly alters course. The team watches closely as the operation progresses. And as the American ship approaches, the fishing vessel blockade begins to disband and the Lu Yang continues north without incident. While this example was notional, events like these happen more often than you realize, and one wrong move could put millions at risk. In these situations, Palantir Gotham provides those who protect our values with the technology to make decisions at speed, and in the process, makes the world a safer place. So guys, yeah, that's really exciting. So again, Gotham is really focused on that, you know, deep machine learning, that deep geospatial intelligence analytics. In terms of data, they have, sat Palantir has satellites flying around everywhere, um, if you didn't know. So really interesting, really amazing technology we have coming from the defense side for the military. Now let's take a look at Palantir's Foundry software. So Foundry, as we can see here, is the operating system for the modern enterprise. 
So Foundry is really being targeted on the commercial side for startups that is going to enable these startups to be available in terms of building for their customers, in terms of um, industrial inspections, in terms of um, really just like early stage growth for startup companies. So this product is being launched underneath a subscription based model. And why is that so important? Because companies that license out their products are often very, very, very profitable because we'll think about it like this. They make one product, they make the software and they license it out over and over and over again. And you have to continue to pay for it if you want to use the service. Like businesses are going to continue to pay the subscription, pay this service fee um, upon its usage, just like my, not just like Microsoft, but in terms of a subscription-based licensing model. It's a very, very profitable business model to offer clients um, a licensing deal. So Foundry was built and tested in many crises, and this is really the operating system that's going to be like integrating your data for operational applications on the business side of things. And like we talked about, guys, this is being rolled out to startups under a subscription model. And if we go back to our operating income and why it's in the negatives, again, this part of this business model is allowing your potential customers to test these products through trials. So Palantir is going to have negative operating income for a minute. Uh, this is not uncommon with technology companies or software or data analytics companies to have negative operating income for the first few years. And it's an excellent strategy in giving these companies access to this product before forcing them to pay for it because it's like, hey guys, you know, we're, we want to show you what we can do. We want to show you what benefit, what value, what use cases, what functionality we're going to bring to your company. So Foundry um, is much more on the commercial side, guys. Like I said, Palantir has infiltrated over 40 sectors and Foundry is really um, safe and it's really focusing on artificial intelligence and anti-money laundering. We have healthcare, we have supply chain and logistics issues that are being corrected through this Foundry operating system. And guys, it's just, we, we have Palantir infiltrating literally every single sector that you could possibly imagine, like the military, governments, they have a partnership with Amazon Web Services. They have partnerships with Black Sky. That is going to be my next video, um, one of my high conviction plays. It is a space data analytics company, geospatial mapping. And they have partnerships with the, energy, the Department of the Energy of Defense. We have partnerships with car companies. We have partnerships with IBM. We just, we have a lot of potential growth here, you guys. We have Palantir dipping their hands into so many sectors. We have strategic partnerships with Farisha and Bark. We have strategic partnerships with Aiken Gump Collaborate. We have, we just have so many partnerships, you guys. We have partnerships with some of the biggest companies on the planet. And it's just really, really exciting, guys. So that's a little bit about Foundry. And next, we're going to talk about the Apollo software. So you can think of Apollo, you can think of this software as the, as the oracle of the counterterrorism database. So we're going to look a little deeper into the Apollo software here in a moment. So here we are, guys. We have a description here that describes Apollo as 
providing a single control layer to coordinate ongoing delivery of new features, security updates, and platform configurations. So Apollo is the cloud computing software that essentially regulates and provides updates and services and you know those integral operational features that all of the other softwares need in terms of like management and auto scaling and you know maintaining that infrastructure of those specific softwares so one of our <laughs> most secure forms of cloud computing um, is going to be found within Palantir. You can kind of see from this diagram here um, the level of, what's the word I'm looking for? The level of clearance, if you will. And essentially, this just means Palantir is highly secure. <laughs> I mean, it's highly secure. Their only customer for over a decade was the US government, if that gives you a decent idea of how secure. And Apollo is really the definition of using software as a service, um, a way of delivering applications over the internet as a service, as opposed to installing and maintaining software, you can just simply access it from the internet. So guys, here we have it here, a cloud agnostic liberating organization with unparalleled flexibility. So guys, Palantir is a really, really exciting find for me. I am very bullish on this company. Again, not just because of the current valuation, which is sitting at about 53 billion, but because of its potential growth, as well as how many sectors are going to be exponentially improved by Palantir's predictive artificial intelligence capabilities, their geospatial analytics and mapping technologies in terms of space travel, in terms of understanding where we need to go as a society in terms of like energy sources, the, the use cases and like the functionality of these softwares and operating systems are literally endless, like literally endless. They're going to be, <laughs> they have outperformed every analyst expectations every single quarter since they IPO'd. We have 49% increase revenue and all of their customers right now are on like trial based subscriptions, which means they're not even paying for them yet. And it's in, like we talked about earlier, it's an excellent business model. It's an excellent trajectory that they're on in terms of use case. The person leading the company, Alex Karp, also very interesting, uh, eccentric guy. He's the CEO of Palantir at the moment. And if you just type in Palantir into your search bar, like you're literally going to see so many, so many partnerships that they've, they've attained this year. They have a partnership with Data Robot. They have a partnership with the, an, I'm sorry, an FAA contract for aircraft certifications of safety solutions. We have a partnership with Intelligent Management Services. We have a partnership with the NSA, of course, naturally, duh. We have a partnership with the Department of Energy's safety analytics. We have partnerships with just so many companies, you guys, like so many companies are, so many companies and so many industries and so many sectors are going to benefit exponentially from data analytics. And the unique, approach and the unique hold that Palantir does have on like predictive analytics. Um, you will hear ethical concern. You will hear ethical uh, concerns from a lot of the public that doesn't necessarily 
agree with this type of technology being um, used against, um, <laughs> or I don't want to say against us, but just if you research it, you'll understand what I mean uh, in terms of sentiment surrounding this kind of technology when it comes to predictive artificial intelligence and like really deep machine learning. But guys, that pretty much sums up this video. It's really exciting what Palantir is doing, what they have been doing and what they're planning to do. So I did recently get over on TikTok, you guys. This is, this is where the future is headed. There's a demand for short little bites of information um, for those with short attention spans. So I am over there on TikTok now. You can follow Evolve or Die. You can follow my Instagram, Jasmine K. Blocker. And yeah, guys, just keep evolving, like keep evolving and look in a palantir for yourself. This is not investment advice and I'm not a financial advisor, but I definitely truly believe that palantir is on a trillion dollar trajectory. Um, like again, because of those use cases, their business model and the revenue that they're projected to be bringing in quarter over quarter is just like, it's obscene. It is obscene. So guys, follow me on all those other forums if you want updates every day about the market and all kinds of other real-time information. Keep evolving, guys.